This is Newcastle, my hometown. It's the binge drinking capital of the north. But that's old news. I'm looking for the next generation of drinkers. They don't go to pubs and clubs, they're too young. But when they are old enough, they'll be ready. It's a park here with a load of kids hanging out, so pull over here and go and have a word with them. How old are you both? I'm 15. 17. What are you drinking anyway? The Labrador School. And how many have you had of them already? Three. So three litres of wine. If you've had three litres of that, are you still standing? <laughs> no. You haven't had three litres yet. Uh, well, it's third one then. Not only five. An exaggeration. Not according to the people who have to pick up the pieces. It's not unusual for a child of 14, 15 to have consumed a litre of vodka. Where a litre of vodka would have me on my back for three or four weeks. And how much you had tonight? Three. Four litres. Four litres? Uh, and how old are you? Six feet. There are girls who can drink their dads under the table. What have you been drinking? I've been white wine. Yeah, this. And how much have you had to drink tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. Just this and there. No, four litres. Four litres? Yeah. Why's that? Have fun. And we'll be hearing new evidence that should make this lot think twice. If only anyone can get them to listen. The research we have so far strongly suggests that adolescents who get drunk on a regular basis in particular run the risk of damaging their brains. This is rural Somerset, a children's playground in the corner of a quiet village field. By night, the kids don't come out to play. They come out to drink. It's just a normal Friday, but there must be hundreds of them. And what are you all doing here? I've got nowhere else to go. I'm not old enough to go to the pub. And I don't see any alcohol. Yeah, that's the thing. Exactly, we all hide it. More and more youngsters turn up with precious supplies of booze. Some have even been dropped off by their parents. Soon there's trouble. The police are up there, some sort of fight. Look at all of this. People living nearby feel intimidated and several call the police. They've got someone in handcuffs over there. He looks maybe about 16, 15, 16. I don't know what's happened yet, but this is just incredible, the scenes here. Oh, yeah, no, no, there's dogs. No, no, there's dogs as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm a goat. What the f is going on? Sorry, sorry. No. A wing mirror has been kicked off a resident's car. It's typical of what goes on here every week, and alcohol's usually at the root of it. <laughs> Do you think they are bad kids? Probably not. Some of them might, I know no they are, but um, the majority are probably quite nice kids at school and any other time, but it's a get sort of egged on by the, I think, a bit of the mob culture in Australia as well as the dream. Excuse me, you the hood. If I hear you swear again, you will be arrested. You've been warned under Section 5 of the Public Order Act. If you swear again, you will be arrested. Do you think that's the right way to deal with Why do they need a dog? We haven't got drugs, we've got drink. Well, nobody else got it anymore. It's too late now, isn't it? And how much have you had? Well, about three cans. Three? Yeah, about three. I estimated there must have been in excess of a hundred. Definitely. So do you need this dog? Woo. <laughs> I'd like to think that I didn't, but you never know what you're going to face. Do you know what I mean? The dog just barking at them did the, did the job of, say, 10 or 15 policemen. You've always had this sort of culture, drinking in this country, but these, these children are like 12, 13 years old and they're so drunk. You know what I mean? They, they have no idea what they're doing. According to the most recent figures, alcohol consumption among 11 to 15 year olds has doubled in just over a decade. Mom, the door! I got two of the girls from the park to talk to me. 
Abby is 15 and Lydia a year older. Nope. She hit the bottle when she was just 14. Can I move some of this stuff? Yeah, sure. Young people increasingly are building their social life around getting drunk. So a quick alco pop before the next party in the park. What would be your first choice? Cider. I can't be doing with vodka. Yeah, I know, but if I drink, if I drink cider, I'll get to like halfway down the bottle and I'll be like, oh, I don't fancy this anymore. If I get like halfway down the vodka bottle, I'll be, or I'll just be drunk, so I don't care. Nah. Meat vodka. Yeah. I reckon vodka tastes worse with like lemonade or something, or coke or anything. I reckon. Can't drink it anymore. I cannot keep it down. It makes you throw up. It does. But cider doesn't. Yeah. Cider's easy to drink. Just drink it quickly. Cider makes me feel ill. It makes me a really, like, really weird feeling in my stomach. Like I'm going to be sick. I'm never sick, but it just makes me feel like I'm going to be. Abby, you drank cider the other week. Yeah, I know, but I only, drank, I only drank half... I only drank a litre of it. Right, well, I'm buying cider tonight. I don't know if you're having any to drink a bit, but... <laughs> Lydia's parents are downstairs. Her father is an ex-prison warder, and her mother is a nurse. They should be well qualified to deal with their daughter's drinking. But they're up against a teenage booze culture they just can't cope with. Everybody else is drinking. I think that's the, the pressure, isn't it? And you don't want to be the only one who's not. So I think you, a bit like smoking, you learn to like it, don't you? Because everybody else is. I'm only a father, so I'm the last to know that I just put down to being a teenager and, and being a girl. That's, what, what, that's the indoctrination I've been given. As all children act in a certain sort of way, and she's no different than anybody else. Then. Lydia's dad's right. A recent European study showed a third of 15 and 16 year olds regularly get wasted on booze. Hello, it's Dennis Lydia. Alright, could you do me a favour, please? Um, could you get me some drink in a bit? It's really important. I'll give you a fag if you do. Alright then. Cheers, me, Bob. <laughs> Bye. Oh, bless him. Yeah. 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 Oh, left it ringing. Yeah. Oh, bless him. <laughs> Lydia's canny. If she saves her bus money and walks, she'll have more to spend on cider. And she won't need to break the law. The older boy she's just called will buy it. Girls like Lydia aren't shopping for taste. They're shopping for strength and at pocket money prices. Say, Dad. Which one? The two for two litres, for four litres for four pound. Two, yeah, the two, two litres for four pounds. Yeah. yeah, all right, I've seen that. Cheers. All right, thanks. All right. <laughs> at what point did you begin to realise that there might have been a problem? I, I suppose, linked with her obviously having had a drink from time to time and you know, we have alcohol in the house as well so you know that, that would go missing um, and there was only one place it could be going. When did you realise it had gone missing? Probably again the, la the last year, 18 months um, and we stopped buying it. We never denied her having a drink with us it was a glass of wine with, with a drop of water in or an alcohol pop and the people round, we have a barbecue, all right, we maybe get a couple of small drinks for her. But she it acts and behaves like she's not really bothered about it. And then we find out she's going off and getting blooded. The deal is done, and the girls have got their hands on four pints of strong cider each. More than many adults could handle if they were honest. Right, See you later. Bye. 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 Uh, Parker, come. Licensing laws and rules on underage drinking are irrelevant to this lot. They're getting drunk anyway, and there's no one to say stop. They're hidden away in the shadows, out of sight of security cameras, and normally the TV cameras as well. But not tonight. We took our cameras out with the paramedics, 
who have to mop up after teenage drinkers every weekend. The streets here in Liverpool are alive with young drinkers. It's a city with one of the worst track records on underage drinking. Kids drinking is nothing new, but the amount that they're now drinking, that's what's changed. It's no longer just drunken adults clogging up our A&E wards. There are drunken kids there too. Hospital admissions for under 18s with drink-related conditions have risen by 20% in five years. Liverpool is near the top of the table. Get in here, we'll sit you down, we'll so sort you out. Here, get that for me please. Yeah. Sit there. How old are you mate? 14. Hello. Right. How much have you had to drink tonight? Not much. Not much. What have you been drinking? Nothing. Nothing. This boy has been in a drunken fight. Our crew was called by a worried resident who heard him shouting for help. Why not? He's 14. Can't. He can't. No, we're going to take you to hospital. Can't get home. No, we're going to take you to hospital. Uh, uh, sure. Ah, no! Where is it, sir? Just where your tooth's gone. Just where your tooth's gone, on this side here. There's a straw here. Okay, so it's just here. Ah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Have you had a lot to drink? Too much. Too much? Yeah. Too much of what? Too much for me. Too much for you. Right. I'm meant to have, I'm meant to have a full set of teeth. At 14 you're supposed to have a full set of teeth, yes, I agree with you there. I've only got 14. Yeah. 14 teeth. Yeah. Yeah, this way. This boy's drinking has cost him a tooth, but alcohol misuse in England alone cost twenty billion pounds a year, and teenagers are helping to run up the bill. Resources are quite sparse anyway, so to be dragged from pillar to post um, all over the city for underage drinking, which is avoidable, uh, is keeping us from the patients that were trained to, to treat. Your heart attacks, you, your asthma attacks, things like that. But the casualties of underage drinking aren't just in A&E. Scientists now warn that this new generation of binge drinkers will face long-term consequences. I met Professor Aaron White, a leading expert on the effects of teenage drinking. It's hard to find a drug that is as capable of damaging the brain or shutting down brain function as alcohol. The latest research on rats has revealed exactly what alcohol does to their adolescent brains. If you expose an adolescent rat to alcohol for four days in a row, uh, a real true bender, there is dam extensive damage to the brain, more extensive than in adult rats, and the damage that occurs occurs in areas that are highly related to memory. And what goes for rats potentially goes for humans too. The adolescent human brain is still a work in progress. And teenagers who drink heavily can damage their brains permanently. There's so much variability in kids in general and how they function once they reach adulthood. But you might take a kid who should be above the curve and put him below the curve as a result of that heavy drinking. And then you would just think, well, he's an average kid. Maybe he wasn't an average kid. Maybe he was destined to be a superior kid in terms of intellect, but the alcohol prevented that from happening. Adolescent binge drinking can literally suppress the development of the teenage brain, stopping teenagers becoming the adults they might have been. The research we have so far strongly suggests that adolescents who get drunk on a regular basis in particular run the risk of damaging their brains. Uh, the potential is there for these effects to be irreversible, because the window of opportunity for molding the brain ends once we end our early 20s. But the dangers of drinking are the last thing on most teenagers' minds. This was obvious to me back in Newcastle, where the boys were more worried about getting a beer belly than anything else. Do you ever worry about what it's doing to your body? Like your insides and... See, he's a That's for not a pot of shit, you see? Right now. what you think now? And you never have a hangover? I've got beer belly now, though. You get the hell out of my eyes, becoming a man, he's becoming a man. <laughs> <It's routine. laughs> Do you ever worry about what it's doing to your body? Because that's quite a lot you've had. No, my liver's fine. <laughs> Do you ever feel like you're damaging your body? Not unless someone like that. Not, not, not really like.
In Somerset, they've been drinking for two hours. And Lydia has drunk her way through her pocket money. Pull out your car and drop your hair All right. Hello. 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 Where's all that cider gone? Gone? All of it? Yeah. How much? Four litres. <laughs> Four litres between us. It's not even ten o'clock. Yeah, I know, but so? it goes fast because it don't taste like If I had like enough alcohol. money, I'd go and buy another two litres. If you had what? If I had enough money, I'd go and buy some more. <laughs> and how do you feel? Fine. I feel slightly tipsy. But <laughs> <that's not it. laughs> what do you drink? I'm on a high. You're and a I feel high. a lot better than I would if I hadn't had the, what, two and a half, three litres of cider I hadn't had. I'm not, af I'm not afraid to tell people how I feel. So does it open you up drinking? It does. I don't care what people think, and I'm a lot. It's, I find it a lot easier to keep. It's a ah. Uh, I might be slow, and I might not understand. I might not be able to get my words out. But I find it a hell of a lot easier to communicate when I've been out of drink. Even when you go to talk to someone, if you fancy them in a bar or something, you go exactly. up to talk you to them. You go and up just, and you talk to her. You have more confidence. You, don't care what you, say. you think? Well, maybe I made a made a muppet of myself, but at least you have fun. <laughs> Lydia's been drinking since she was 14. What began as teenage kicks has become a serious problem for her and her family. Do you think that people have become too accepting of this underage drinking culture? Yeah. yeah. It's not a question of it's not happening to my child or it's not happening to other children without really knowing what your children are up to. As I say, I'm taken out of the blue all of a sudden I'm presented with a child who's got an alcohol problem. And how does that make you feel as a father? Mm. Lost. So one father feels lost. How does it make the children feel? How old are you? Yeah, yeah. Seventeen. And what does it make you feel like when you get a drink? <laughs> Hey, ba, horny, bougie, loads of stuff. I don't know. What a bottle of beer! Didn't go with And so, how do you feel when you when you've had three bottles of that? Yeah, we're the fatties. A little bit bougie. Nice bougie or bad bougie? Good. And how do you feel the next day? Fine. You never get a hangover. No. You will when you get to my age. A lot of the children I spoke to don't suffer from hangovers or any of the kind of symptoms that adults do. Is that quite dangerous? Right. What's, it's interesting. There are a few things that as adults uh, would keep us from going back to alcohol. And one of them is a hangover. You wake up and you feel horrible. You don't want to do it again because it, it, it's, it felt horrible. Our kids can stay up longer, uh, keep drinking without falling over or falling asleep, and when they wake up, they don't feel hungover. So that there aren't those those knocks in the head uh, to deter them from going back. So they might not get a hangover, but it's because they're teenagers that the alcohol is causing them special harm. Research shows teenage drinking increases the chances of them becoming alcoholics later on. The statistics showing that you're at increased risk of becoming an alcoholic later in life if you start drinking as a teen. That doesn't require heavy drinking, that just seems to be a result of just exposing the brain to alcohol during these critical periods of development. There are no safe limits for underage drinkers. But research also shows that every year a teenager avoids drinking will lessen the chances of becoming an alcoholic later in life. Every day that you delay the onset of drinking, so you go from 14 to 15 to 16 to 17, etc., the odds go down. And so, from the, from the standpoint of alcoholism, the risks are pretty high if you're a young teen and start drinking that you'll go on to have a problem. In Somerset, it's the morning after the night before. Lydia has been drinking for two years, so she's already risked permanent harm. Rubbish. When did you start drinking? Well, I was about 14. So I started going down Wild Stop basically with my friend and because vodka was cheap and we'd only get the little bottles it was like 2 50 each and we both bowled well, 2 50 from both of us to make up the five when we just go house up on it. Did you have it with anything? No. Neat? Yeah. But to have neat vodka, it's quite hardcore. I don't know. I wasn't aware of how strong it was. 
So I, I just kind of just drank it and thought, mm -hmm. and then some more. And you actually liked it? No, it made me heave, but when I realised I was getting really, really drunk really quickly, I thought, yes, I like it. Everyone was like, oh my god, they can drink vodka. They're like, yeah, we can drink vodka. And started down on it just because everyone was watching us. I wanted to like, make everyone think that we were older than we were. Just for waking me up. Don't start. Do you think your parents actually realised how much you were drinking then? No. No way. Because I, I used to come in really drunk. And they'd say, oh, I hope you've been <laughs> drinking. So, no, I've only had a can of Foster's. Stumbles up the stairs, peeps in the toilet, and sees like rolling to bed and passes out. You see her every day. Yeah. Was it strange to know this had been going on and you hadn't noticed it? Yeah, yeah, we've, we've always got hindsight, and looking back, I can see the, the little telltale signs. But when you question, it's like there's a strop on thing. Oh, she's just in a bad mood. So wet. So then she comes back. Have you been drinking? Oh, I haven't had a two. Well, they were one and you, as soon as you try and delve and go a bit deeper then you get the explosive explosion up in the air well why don't you trust me this that and the other morning like many parents maureen and steve didn't know how to stop their daughter drinking short of locking lydia up they felt helpless now they accept her occasional midweek binge drinking because it's a marked improvement five months ago she was drinking every day Oh, I got ice not. Yeah. I got ice not. Once they're out of the house, they are, to a large extent, out of your control. I'm not saying we didn't make an effort to know where she was, but you can't know where they are all the time um, and what they're doing. I and mean, you can only advise or, or, you know, otherwise be on their back all the time. Couldn't you just have grounded Lydia? Again, you know, she was grounded to an extent in that we began to control things far more. Um, but grounding doesn't always create the, the the answer that you want. They definitely didn't get the answer they wanted. When they clamped down on Lydia's drinking, she ran away from home. These are the genteel streets of Bath, where just six months ago Lydia was sleeping rough. It took her to her lowest ebb. How bad did it get? It's a point where I was suicidal. I don't mean that in a funny way, it's just not funny, but... And how did the drinking affect that? It eased it. While I was pissed, it was like, it doesn't matter. But... So when you were drunk, you felt less suicidal? Yeah. I used to come drinking her like every day when I was away from home. Every day? Every day. Does it feel different to be stood here sober? Yeah. And at what time would you start drinking? In the morning when I wake up. See people, make sure we had enough money to buy a bottle of Lambrini or something in the morning. Get, get the juices going. It proper messed me up. I used to have like bad tummy aches, everything. Really horrible. Lydia's story might sound extreme, but official figures show 14% of children aged 16 to 19 are alcohol dependent. Sainsbury's Market. I used to sleep here. How many nights did you spend out here? Two weeks. How did it feel sleeping out without a proper roof over your head? It's exciting. But it's degrading. It's like in the morning you're sitting up and like... People walk past and they can blatantly tell like, what you've been doing. You just sit there like, okay. And everyone just looks at you like you're nothing. And you, you realise actually I'm nothing. Did you ever think, what am I doing here? I'm just a little girl. No. Yeah. <laughs> I regarded myself as an adult. What's been the hardest bit about stopping drinking so much? There's always reality now. Whereas drinking was like a break from reality, isn't it, really? But I realised it's not actually doing any favours anyway, so there's no point in drinking quite as much. And how do you feel about the journey that you've had in the last six months? Oh From sleeping God. rough to how you are now? It's been hard work. Really hard. But I've managed it. I'm still there, so... I'm okay. Lydia is now having treatment at Project 28, a 
Teenage Addiction Centre in Bath. Lydia has been here for about five months. She's been with us. Lydia referred herself. And how much was she drinking? Whatever she could get her hands on and whatever she could afford. Whatever she could, whatever money she would get would mostly go on, on alcohol. What a, what one day. After 18 months of heavy drinking, Lydia knew she needed help. She now sees a counsellor every day after college. Tell me a bit more about that. Tell me about the fears. Tell me what has gone wrong. I let people down. You let people down? Okay. What else? I let people walk away from my life. You let them walk away from your life? Yeah. I'm a pussy if everyone thinks like, oh, there's so many Lydia, so it doesn't matter anyway. There's so many what? There's so many Lydia, so Lydia. it doesn't matter anyway. Right. I don't do nothing right. Nothing I do is right. Just, don't know. Just like, I don't know. Hmm. Right. Who, uh, who tells you nothing that you do is right? I just think that. Is that something you tell yourself or does that come from outside? No, that's what I've told myself. That's what I believe anyway. Okay. Okay. And you believe in, inherently that your parents are disappointed? Yeah. Do you? Do you, have you got any reason why they might be disappointed? It's like, I, I didn't do my exams, I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I like ran away from them. You ran away from home for a while? I treated them like shit, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's like the ideal daughter to have. And what would the ideal daughter, what's the ideal teenager? What, 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 what do they do? Polite. Nice, they keep their bedroom tidy, they go off for one at every opportunity. <gasps> I'd love to meet one of those. I would love to meet one of those. <laughs> Lydia is one of the lucky ones. In some parts of the country, only drug abusers get this kind of treatment. A recent study revealed that every pound spent on alcohol counselling can save the NHS five pounds further down the line. But Colin Cripps, who spent 20 years working with addicted teenagers like Lydia, says alcohol abuse still isn't getting the funding it deserves from government. The drugs policy in this country is increasingly focusing on the criminal justice system um, and on young people who are using Category A drugs. And that seems to be the, the, the overwhelming focus. Um, unfortunately, the drugs that most young people are using are cannabis and alcohol, and alcohol far more than any of the others become much more acceptable for young people, younger and younger ages, to, to indulge in binge drinking, to see it as a rite of passage um, that involves uh, using it to excess um, and increasingly, particularly with, with young girls, um, as a way of escaping problems. Back in Liverpool, we're seeing just that. The emergency services are dealing with the high cost of teenage drinking. We are called to a 15-year-old who's been on a lager and vodka bender in the park and then went on the attack. Yeah, just split open. You butted someone? Yeah. And it split open? Yeah. Okay, were you knocked out at all? No. No. You had a drink tonight? Yeah. What have you drank? Vodka. How much vodka? I'm like a three-pound bottle. Three-pound bottle? Yeah. A big stack of metal. Ah, four in it. Can you look at my nose for me? Keep looking at my nose for me. Lovely. How's your vision at the moment? Oh, good. I don't, don't feel any difference from that. Just thinking. That's okay, it. fair enough. Thanks, Ian, whenever you're ready. It's not unusual for a child of 14, 15 to have consumed a litre of vodka. Where a litre of vodka would have me on my back for three or four weeks. But lots of teenage drinkers are destined to return to hospital later in life, with more than a cut on the head. Down the road at the Royal Liverpool Hospital, Professor Ian Gilmore, a liver specialist, is already seeing the longer term effects of teenage binge drinking. They are clearly the ones we worry about most. They're the ones who are now going to be occupying my wards in 10, 15 years time with advanced alcoholic liver disease. I'm seeing young women with end-stage liver disease, uh, which I just never saw 20 years ago. And that's because people are starting to drink younger and they're drinking more. So is the situation getting worse? There's been a real change in the 
pattern of alcoholic liver disease. All liver specialists are seeing it. When I started as a consultant 20 odd years ago, cirrhosis was a, was a disease of middle-aged and elderly men. Now we're seeing it in both sexes, uh, but particularly in young people and an increasing percentage of women. The underage drinkers in Liverpool are still keeping the paramedics busy. We were called to attend to a teenager who hadn't been drinking, but was attacked by others who had. Right. Get in the back of the truck for us. Yeah, do you sit down there for me? That's what's happened. What's that for? What? Excuse me. Just want to step away from here, lads. Step away. We're waiting for the alpha. Yeah, cheers. What's happened? I was on the way back from the garage and these lads ran past me and slashed me with a knife. Let's have a look. Have you been drinking I, tonight? No. No. I got back from your hands. You just got back from your hands, so you know what I'll go. Um, Ian, can you get us some dressings out the back, please? The lads that did it here, are they drunk? Well, I think so. Yeah, okay. So, listen, you have a laceration about that big underneath your arm, okay? You're going to need to go to hospital. That is going to need stitching. Okay. What time do you want me to come up? My mum's going out at half past seven. She said, but she wants me to go up a little bit before that. Can I go up, Abby? It's about quarter to seven. Yeah. Did you find that bottle of vodka, Ab? <laughs> my mum's head just turned so quickly. <laughs> Nothing. I was just winding my mum up. Good going, Lydia. But Lydia's drinking is no joke to her parents. They've tried, without success, to warn her about the consequences. Okay. Bye. Bye. How do you stop it? We put forward that Nick case that you can't abuse yourself by consuming all these vast amounts of alcohol without paying for it in the longer term, of which it certainly will, even if it's not in the short term. You get drunk enough, you walk out and you get knocked over by a car, you'll get attacked. You they fall over to a window. Stand back. Cue the government's new £4 million ad campaign designed to stop binge drinking. But will it reach the audience it's aimed at? There's a lot of evidence and has been for decades that mass media campaigns on alcohol or illegal drugs don't discourage heavy use or addiction or accidents, injuries and deaths. We've had decades of health education on alcohol and in fact consumption's going up and problems are going up. In 2004, the government unveiled what it called its harm reduction strategy. Too much alcohol makes you feel invincible when you're most vulnerable. The policy aimed to tackle alcohol abuse through better education and treatment services. It hoped to address the antisocial behaviour and crime caused by drinking. News from the front line is not good. How long have we got before you think the situation becomes uncontrollable with underage drinking? I think the fact that we're seeing things getting worse rather than better two years after a harm reduction strategy means we need to revisit this very urgently. And what we cannot afford to do is, is wait the 40 years that it took uh, with smoking. Uh, we know the tobacco industry was incredibly powerful. It took a long time to get the health messages home. We cannot afford that same long time scale with alcohol. There are two government ministers responsible for alcohol policy but neither wanted to come on Panorama and explain their strategy. We wanted to ask them why the duty on cider hadn't gone up in three years. From that shop over there, I've just bought five litres of this really strong cider. There's 37 units here, and it cost me less than five pounds. That's more than a grown man should drink in a week. We at the Royal College of Physicians have been calling for the price of alcohol in real terms to to go back towards where it was about 20 years ago by a gradual increase in tax. We know that is not popular with government. Government does not want to be accused of being in the nanny state. But I think we're in a situation at the moment where nanny knows best. And if we don't do something, we're going to regret it in a few years' time. 
as alcohols become more affordable, consumption's gone up, and as consumption has gone up, alcohol-related deaths has gone up. And this is a very important relationship, and although it's politically embarrassing, we have to address it sooner rather than later. So would a price rise affect teenagers? They don't have an income. Um, well, teenagers do have money. Some of them have lots of money. But yes, a price rise would have an impact on teenagers. And there is evidence that if the price of alcohol rises, the particularly heavy drinkers are most affected. So it could actually have a very good effect on teenagers. But what does Lydia think? I don't want everyone to... I don't want the, dr the drink <laughs> prices to change. I really don't. They should, but I don't want them to. And if they did, what would happen? Hmm. I wouldn't be very happy. <laughs> um, no, I, there would be a lot less children drinking. So if you think about it, a bottle of cider is the same amount as a bottle of Coke. What's the point in buying a bottle of Coke when you can just buy, and you can buy alcohol and you can have a drink, quench your thirst and have fun at the same time? It's really it's twisted. <laughs> There's a 15 year old girl, seriously intoxicated, who's possibly violent. We're on our way there now. So, this isn't to someone's house, is it? No, it's a public place. Yeah, and there's loads of them, so watch yourselves, please. One seven four in attendance. This is Liverpool Dockside, and another ambulance has reached the scene before us. <laughs> Okay. Two calls, one's further down. Two separate calls? Yeah, two separate calls. We believe the one that's done South Harbour's further down with the police officers. So we're going to make... There's a drunken, a drunken lady, okay. a drunken 15-year-old. We get back in and we'll go down for the second job. We're looking for a 15-year-old girl who seems to have disappeared. They think she might have fallen in the river. We've got... A rescue team on the river here, the Mersey, and we've got a police helicopter. And the paramedics say if she is in the river, she doesn't stand a chance. But after searching for an hour, police decide she's probably just gone home. One drunken escapade has cost the public purse more than £50,000. Not exactly a cheap night out for the rest of us. Go on, keep talking. Talking, 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 talking. That should be loud. As part of her alcohol yeah, treatment, yeah, yeah. Lydia, yeah, who's been drinking yeah, for two yeah, years, do, has been encouraged to express her problem in song. Sometimes at night I feel all alone. The sun it rises, I'm still feeling lonely. Sometimes it She's come a long way after six months of treatment. But Lydia is surrounded by a culture where having fun is geared around booze. I'll hold my head high, I'm not alone. I'll take each day as it comes my way. This will not break me. Was that better? Wicked, to tell you the truth. What's the next step? No, I'm not, I'm not going to stop drinking. I'm not going to stop drinking. Such is boring. I don't think I'll be able to do it either. Why? Do you know? It's just... It's a ritual, isn't it? It's part, it's part of teenage culture. To do drunk and get drunk. Just not get as drunk as I do normally. And drink as often as I do. Can you imagine being able to go out with your friends and not having a drink on a Friday or Saturday night? No. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> Next week on Panorama, online gambling, Britain's new obsession. We meet the winners and losers of a multi-billion pound industry where fortunes are made and lost in an instant. If you've been affected by any of the issues in tonight's programme and would like to talk to someone in confidence, please call the BBC Action Line on 08000 934 934. That's 08000 934 934. All calls are free and confidential.